All right, fun stuff today. What's up, everybody? Again, it's me, Justin Murray, founder, owner, and operator of Straight Up Productions, coming to you today to talk about blues. The blues, the blues, the blues. I am so excited today to zoom you in into the blues and give you some key tips in how to solo over a blues. I love playing over blueses. So fun. So fun. All right? So let's go ahead. I'm excited. Let's go. All right, so we're back in front of the piano, all right? We're gonna get out of the key of C today. We're gonna visit one of my favorite keys, which is F, all right? <laughs> now, last week we talked about scales, right? And how we can use scales and um, to just further our melodic development, uh, create some more melodic content, get some more technique and facility under our fingers and all of that, all right? Soloing is one area where we really use scales. So before we get into soloing, let's actually talk about the blues form. What is it? What are the chords? All right, so let's take a look at this sheet right here. This is typically how a blues would go, especially um, in like swing music and jazz and stuff like that. Uh, when you get into like rhythm and blues, that kind of blues, um, some things may be a little different, the style is a little different, but this still applies, all right? So, we're in the key of F here, and what you see is we have like F7 for four bars, right? B flat seven for two bars, F7 for two bars, and then we have like this little turnaround, right? We have a G minor seven, our C7, and our F7 for two bars, all right? That's kind of vanilla how it goes, right? We see some things that are a little different. Sometimes that turn around is like a C7 to a B flat seven, or we get like a like an A minor seven, D7, a G minor seven, C7 kind of movement to get us back to the top. Um, even in the, in the top of the form, sometimes it's like F7 for two bars, B flat seven for two bars, back to F. Some things may happen, but this is basically uh, how blues this goes. You're not gonna get kicked off a gig for playing this kind of movement. Um, over a blues, okay? So, um, let's go ahead and address this as well. Blues heavily uses dominant seven chords, right? And for those of us who really know theory well, we know that dominant seven really functions as five a lot, right? But in the blues, you're gonna hear this kind of colloquially, still like in the key of F, right? They're gonna call F7 the one chord. B flat seven is the four chord, all right? It's just that the dominant seven is kind of our, our fundamental sound here okay all right so now that we got that progression out of the way let's talk about how we navigate over this thing all right let's talk for a second so there are three ways that you can solo over a blues there's more than that actually but i like to kind of talk about three different ways so we can play blanket statement Use blanket statement ideas. All right. We can really focus rhythmically. So choosing only a few notes and really focusing more on like rhythmic content and rhythmic motifs rather than really trying to get creative melodically. All right. And then we can play the changes. All right. Um, playing the changes, we're going to talk about that, just really navigating through and outlining each one of these chord changes rather than just playing blanket statement sounds. Nothing wrong with a blanket statement, but playing the changes really gets a little more ingrained into the chords that you're playing, all right? So, let's dive back in. Here we go. So we're in the key of F, all right? F dominant seven here, is our first chord, all right? So, Last week, one of the scales that we talked about was the blues scale, right? So that was when we took our root, went up a step and a half, whole step, half step, half step, step and a half, whole step. All right? 
So these are kind of the ingredients for that blanket statement sound that I was kind of telling you guys about, right? These sounds. work over the entire blues progression, right? They fit over every chord. So if I just sit here and kind of play through, Again, those sounds clearly work over every chord, every root note in there, all right? Okay, so how do we make an interesting solo with those five or six notes, okay? When we're creating melodic content, which is what soloing is, you're improvising melodies and coming up with melodic content. You don't just ever wanna sit there and blaze, right? That doesn't mean anything to anybody. It really doesn't. So we really got to think about our phrasing here, all right? And what we can do is build, right, off of our ideas. So if we're starting, let's say, um, let's say we don't start on the root, right? Let's say we come up with like one little riff or motif that we can play, um, that we can branch off of. So let's say we're right here, tempo-wise, right? Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. All right, that's an idea. All right, then we can branch off of it. All right, keep it going. So you want to come up with content and think um, phrase-wise, all right? That keeps you from being too busy, all right? Now let's stop and talk about something real quick, all right? So as we saw, I don't know if you guys didn't count, the blues is 12 bars, all right? 12 total bars, four, like three sets of four bars, right? Get us to 12. And one way you can think about a blues is like, a, A, B statements, right? Say a statement, say the same thing, and then you say something slightly different. All right, if you listen to like a lot of old blues music, um, like Bessie Smith stuff, lyrically, that's kind of what happens, right? Um, even those of us who play in church and, and are used to those kind of things, those call and response kind of things, uh, we, we hear a lot of that, right? We call and respond the same thing, and then the last thing, maybe the third or fourth time, is slightly different. Same kind of concept. That kind of approach can help you in your soloing. All right, so let me show you what I'm talking about. So if we're right back here at that same tempo, one, two, three. Two, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. Six, two, is that second A? All right, here's that B part. Right? So we got this, we got this repeated statement, right? And then we change it up at the end. That's a great way to get started. Um, Soloing over this blues here 
Um, and then you can branch out from there and get a little more creative, a little busier if you want to um, start to branch out. As you can see, I start to go in different directions using those same ingredients from the blue scale. All right, so that's one way. All right, the next way, using a small collections of notes and thinking rhythmically this time. All right, so uh, for those of us who are not aware, when we solo in jazz and things that have a, a swung feel to it, it's usually triplet based, all right? So rather than thinking like one and two and three and four and or one E and two E and three E and the really uh, duple based, right? Eighth notes or sixteenth notes, we're thinking triplet, 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 one, two, three, 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 right? And if you ever heard the, the term swung eighth notes, it's triplets without that middle uh, little eighth note in there, right? So triplets are kind of like, excuse the claw, but like, three little eighth notes, right? And what we're doing is getting rid of that middle one. So where we have triple the triple the triple the triple the trip the trip the trip the trip the right? So if I play like triplets, eighth notes. Okay? So try to get that in your mind, in your body, right? And so everything that we play can be syncopated and based off that triplet feel, right? So here's what I mean. Let's take three notes, okay? I'm gonna take C, E flat, and F. I'm gonna take those three notes, okay? And what I'm gonna do is think rhythmically with just those three notes and see how I can build, all right? Let's check it out, all right? So I'm gonna take those three notes, all right? So, right back here, right? Here we go. So I kind of stopped in the middle before I complete the whole course, but you saw just by kind of thinking rhythmically, you can come up with some different stuff. Now, what I also threw in there was a little bit of dynamic things, right? If I was doing like a repeated note, you kind of crescendo that stuff, right? Leading up into a certain note. All those things kind of mesh together to create some more ideas and create some more uh, variety in what you're playing, all right? So that's another idea that you can use. All right, now, the last idea we have is playing through the changes. This is really where the scales come into play, all right? So, we've already talked about the blues scale today. One of the scales that we touched on last week was the dominant scale. It's a great place to use that. Why? Because we have a lot of dominant scales, right? We have the F7. Sorry, we have a lot of dominant chords. Sorry, so we have the F7. We got the B flat seven. Those of us who use jazz versions. 
right? G minor seven, C seven, right? Back to F seven. Okay. So again, that that dominant seven, the dominant scale here, is the same as the major scale, but we just flat that seventh. Playing the changes, what you want to do is acknowledge each chord change, right? So again, as you notice, this whole time I'm not using a back a backing track, Jamie Abersall loop, a pre-recorded anything. I'm not walking a bass line or anything because the idea is to get us to be able to play through a blues and have everybody know what we're playing, be able to communicate um, where we are in the form, communicate the style that we're playing. Um, all of that stuff to an audience. If you can do that in your practice time unaccompanied, when you get with the rhythm section, when you get with the backing track, if you have to use one that feels really great, oh man, it's gonna take, it's gonna make that experience that much better. All right? So, what I wanna do is really outline the changes, all right? Outline the chord that I'm playing. So, even with that scale, another thing that we can do is arpeggiate as well so let's just talk about uh, the scale real quick all right before we get into arpeggiation so if i'm on f7 right I'm gonna outline f7 right that's using some chromatic just basically using the dominant scale right but i had some chromaticism in there outlining f7 okay now when we get to arpeggiating is using the scale almost like the thirds right which is what how we get to the chord right taking each note in the scale and kind of skipping one all right i'm gonna, I'm gonna do a detailed video later on, on chords so stay tuned for that so when you arpeggiate you just play those notes one by one skip one skip one skip one in the scale right all right, that's a clear way of outlining F7. So if I'm playing two, three, four. Right? Clear, uh, clear way of doing that. So what if we combine the two? Check it out. Two, three, and. seven all over the place all right so then we kind of do the same thing in b flat right we remember the b flat seven chord so if we're in b flat we got to kind of think a key within the key here right we're still in overall in the key of f but we shift slightly to b flat right as the chord changes all right so same concept two three So we, we shift from B flat, then we go from B flat, shift back to F. All right? So when you're soloing and playing the changes, you have to acknowledge the changes. And we have to almost think a key within a key. Although we're in F, I was thinking B flat there over that B flat seven change. All right? All right? Then when we get to that G minor, think G minor. So we use that G minor scale, right? So of that G minor, arpeggiation. All right, C7. 
same concept as the F and B flat, right? Think C7. And notice I'm still keeping that triplet feel in mind. Triplet, 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 triplet. Right, then back to F. All right, so, excuse me for being all over the place. Like I said, I love the blues, love the blues, love the blues. So, now the key is putting this all together in time, right? In time, which means metronome. We gotta use that guy, all right? So, if I was to play the changes, we got to make sure we connect the dots from change to change, all right? And we want to make sure we do this in melodic fashion, right? In something that makes sense in a clear way, right? So if I start from the top, two, one, two, three, F. Kind of played a little bit of a bass line to give you a clue where I was. All right, so now I'm going to do it unaccompanied. All right, see if you can follow along. Use your ear. One, two, uh, one, two, three. Uh. kind of gave it away but could you follow along that's the goal all right that is the goal to be able to play unaccompanied even if you do one of the other things right one of the other methods that we talked about blanket statement sound with the blues scale rhythmically play in a way that kind of lets people know where you are if i'm doing a blanket statement two one two thirds control of the of the form to be able to know where you are all right and always 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 think about feel make it feel immaculate okay make it feel immaculate all right it's the swing it's the blues it's got to feel good all right so i hope you guys had as much fun as i did learning how to play the blues i'm telling you you start having fun in the practice room, it gets fun, you get better, you start to add these things to your arsenal, add these things to your playing, and only what's in you is going to come out. So get this in you, get the swing in you, get the scales in you, get the sound in you. Listen to some of your favorite players, the Corey Henrys, all right, the Charlie Parkers, the Oscar Petersons, listen to them, the Sarah Vaughns, the Bessie Smiths, all right, the Diane Reeves, all of them, listen to them. Listen to what they're playing, the Jockos, the Ray Browns, the Victor Rudens. Check them out, man, and, and hear the elements that they're using in their solos and their playing. All right, I guarantee you, you're going to hear some of the same stuff. You're going to hear some arpeggiations. You're going to hear some blues scale. You're going to hear some dominant sounds. All right, they're in there. They're in there. They're in there. All right, so apply them to what you do. All right, happy music, happy practice, happy learning. Much love to you all, and I will see you next time.